four or five rows back. And he, you're having, like, you're not one of these guys. You're having fun. But everybody, like, either they're 55 and under or they're 56 and over, and everybody's taking turns. And he's chewing gum. And the whole, every time somebody's singing, and like, don't taste like this. I'm not going to sing, but I am going to lip sing. I paid money. I'm not going to fucking sing. But he's like, totally, he was into it. No, I know. It's a scary thing awesome. when you're a guy to, to sing in unison. But, I mean, to sing with the group. But I learned very early in life, girls like guys who sing. That's why I said, fuck this guitar playing thing. I'm going to become a singer, whether I can sing or not. So, my friends, uh, over the years, oh, no, years, uh, I wish, over the decades that I've been doing this, um, I've written so many songs for all for my own reasons, all for my own selfish purposes. I've never uh, tried to write a song that fit a certain thing, or whatever. like it's just it's just life experience and things that I care about or things that I'm going through, whatever. So I write every song from a very selfish perspective. It's just amazing when that becomes something that other people can really relate to. And uh, over the years, I've, uh, decades, uh, I have, uh, I've written a few songs that, for whatever reason, have become these sort of anthems for events in people's lives. And not just the songs I've written that I've sung, but I've written up a lot of songs for other people, a lot of other artists over the years. And so, like, one of them, I wrote, I, you probably wouldn't know this until tonight, but I wrote Josh Groban's first hit called To Where You Are. Thank you very much. And uh, it's a song about, like, losing somebody and, like, wishing and, like, wondering where they are. Like, they, they're gone, and you, but you still think about them. And this song that Josh took to number one to start his career has become, so many people have said to me, we used that at my father's memorial, we used that at my grandpa's funeral. I mean, it's a little depressing, but it's very, it's like humbling, it's really nice that people use this song at memorials, you know? Um, I wrote a song with my dear friend Luther Vandross called Dance With My Father. That's a, you know, it's a Father's Day anthem. It's a, um, and uh, I wrote a song that I recorded back in the 80s called Hold On To The Nights. Now, I, that song has become, starting in 1988, to now, it, this is like, this is proven, it is the number one prom anthem. It's a song about cheating. <laughs> it's a song about doing the deed with somebody you shouldn't be doing the deed with. And now here we have all these millennials who are like, hold on to my <laughs> All right. Dude, you're, you're California cat city. Sweet, dude. Um, but then again, I've also written a few songs that were these very romantic ballads that people have used at their oh, weddings and yes. So this is a true story. Not but like, a few months ago, I'm on to I'm I'm out doing shows like Rick and I tour separately and together, which is awesome. So when we come together, we're it's like completely fresh and we're having fun. But I was out playing. Uh, I think it was in Milwaukee. I was doing a show in Milwaukee and. I had just enough time to run back to the hotel and go up to my room and change for the show. And I'm by myself in the elevator going up to my floor and the doors open like halfway up and this couple gets on. And they recognize me and they're like, hey, oh, it's so nice to meet you. We had a nice little chat. And the wife said, this is so crazy that we're meeting you because we got married to your song. <laughs> And I looked at them and I said, was it should have known better? <laughs> Let's do it! Let me see if they heard me call your name. 
speak.